motion capture, when you need that unique animation that you're just not going to find on the asset store. Now, mocap equipment is expensive, right? Well, maybe not anymore. And in this video, I will demonstrate an option that will probably fit your indie budget, while I don't have to fit into a tight-fitting suit, because nobody, nobody wants to see that. So what is this option? Enter the Makopi by Sony. And at a recent Unity meetup, I got to make a fool of myself in front of an audience, which I seem to do now on the regular. Right, we're here at an event down in Irvine and we've got Sony down here presenting the Makopi system. So, Daisy, tell me more about what you've got me wired into here. Amazing. Okay, we have the Makopi professional mode system, which actually takes two Makopi sets, combines them and having now 12 data points for your emotion tracking experience um, and for higher accuracy and uh, better content. Yeah. Unity meetups are a lot of fun. And Unity now has a meetup page where you can find a Unity meetup near you. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to look for yourself. Now, back to me pretending I am in my 20s and have full range of movement in my body. But before I get started, I should state that Sony sent me the Makopi system for the purposes of this video and to use at a meetup. They've not paid for me to make this video and they have no input on this review. Oh, and I used to work at Sony AAA Games back in 2006, so they have a special place in my memory. In my new game, Unimaginable Foundation, I will have many unique scenarios of characters interacting with each other on the regular, stuff I'm not going to find on the asset store. So let's see how I plan to create one of these scenarios. First off, I hook myself up. Now, Makopi uses a sensor-based system, which comes in a six-pack, or a pro version with 12 sensors, like you see me wearing here. No big tracking system on the ceiling required, and also, most importantly, for your viewing pleasure, no tight-fitting suit. So, wired up, and here I am side-by-side, -side, a lifeless robot-looking thing, and the animated model in Sony's motion capture software suite. Now, I should state, I'm no actor and that should be obvious from this video, but I can hit a quality level good enough for what I'm going to put into the game. So, in Sony software, I press capture and I perform my little routine of entering the room and then leaving. I can separate out those two animations later into Unity. When we're finished, we stop the capture and the software will automatically export an FBX ready to go. Now, for the scenario, the following is just an experiment on antagonists in my game. Think of it like a vertical slice, a little bit of storyboarding. Basically, don't judge me on any final quality yet. It's not. You can see this is grey box. Also, I had issues deciding on the creature that's going to steal the character's pants. Drop ideas in the comments. Underpants gnomes are an option. Or I could just leave a duck, like I have here as the placeholder. So. How do we get that motion we just captured into Unity? Well, I will drop the FBX output into a folder and I'll set the rig to humanoid and then I'll trim the fat from the animation. These animations will play out in a cutscene. Here we have our scene set up with a timeline ready to go. I will drop the animation onto the timeline and hey presto, we have ourselves a custom animation. It's that easy. Now, even if you don't have big cutscenes, you know, big scenarios, maybe you just want to make a conversation between two characters a little bit more engaging, like this one example we see here. I have the player talking to an engineer. Now, the left is a looping conversation with an animation from the asset store, and the right is something I performed in a few minutes. You be the judge on what has more life to it. Now, it can't all be pros. What are the cons? Well, in one word, hands. You see, if you're making a game about characters waving to each other, I've got good news for you. This is the perfect solution, and you won't need to edit any of your animations. But in 99.9% .9 of cases, that's not what your game's about. You see, the Makopi system, it doesn't track fingers. And if you know of a reasonably priced indie solution for hand tracking, let me know in the comments. I really really want one. For now though, luckily the fix is pretty easy, with U-Motion coming to the rescue. It has a tool for easily manipulating the finger positions, and I can simply pull in the captured animation and then keyframe in a few minutes to give it a little bit more life. I'll leave a link in the description to U-Motion on the Unity Asset Store if you want to pick it up. 
Now, in my experience with a short time I've had the equipment, I think this is going to suit the needs of my title, and it probably will for a lot of indie developers out there. Now, it is IMU based, so it's not going to be as good as some of those big high-end optical solutions you see the movie studios or the AAA games have, and it's probably not going to be as accurate as one of those really expensive IMU suits you can see on the market, especially for those fast and complex movements. And one last thing to note, it is a strapped-based solution. So the sensors are connected to you with straps, which means if you do any heavy movements like throwing yourself off the back of a couch, you'll have to be prepared to recalibrate afterwards. All in all though, I'm very happy with the solution from Sony. So thank you to them for supplying me a version to test. If you wanna see how I progress in my acting skills, consider subscribing to the channel and I'll have a devlog series on the game very, very soon. And if you want to pick yourself up a Makopi set, I'll leave a link in the description, an affiliate link, so if you want to buy one, you can support the channel in doing so. And that's it. I'm off to ponder the meaning of life and to consider why, oh why I decided to create such a large scoped game.